ready? Do 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 Uh, 
countries that wanted to get starts like Norway were pushed down. Uh, and of course, we all know Napoleon in France uh, wished to have all of Europe under his control. Now, what I like to do is go country to country and sort of give you a little background. First, I'm going to start with my own country of Denmark. We have had a weak ruler recently. Uh, Christian VII was actually a feeble-minded person in that he had a mental disease much like uh, King George III. Uh, he did some despicable things in front of people that the Danish government just couldn't see him continuing as king. So they uh, went to the royal family and uh, picked a person who's my cousin, cousin Frederick, to be the regent until a, ru a ruler could be found. And so Frederick came into power in, in Denmark, which would also mean Norway. Uh, he was a stubborn person. He made decisions way too quickly, and he didn't run the, the uh, Denmark government very well. But he was pursuing the fact that Norway was, his, was part of Denmark and wanted to keep it that way. So that's important with things to come. Another country, of course, would be France. That would be Napoleon. Uh, we all know from our history uh, about Napoleon and how he wanted to conquer different countries for different reasons, but wanted to sort of be united uh, continental Europe. The other player, their arch enemy, was England. Now, England uh, had an alliance with different countries that were sometimes broken and sometimes not. But Denmark wanted to be neutral. And they stayed neutral for most of this period. But about 1807, uh, for some reason, uh, England decided they didn't want any country to trade with France. Denmark thought that they should be able to trade with France and anybody they wanted because they were neutral. And England didn't like that. So they did two things. First, they uh, invaded Denmark for one battle just to teach them a lesson. <laughs> and secondly, which was important for Norway, is they blockaded uh, the North Sea and the area between Denmark and Norway. Mm -hmm. And the blockade hurt Norway more than it did Denmark because of the trade that Norway had blocked would lose. So that's important to know about England, because that will come up again. Then we have Russia. Russia was uh, governed by uh, Tsar Alexander. I believe. And I don't know too much about his story, but uh, he definitely wanted uh, an, an area that we now call Finland. Finland was part of Sweden. That's going to be important. So he wanted that. And at the time, they were allies with France. Many of you know later on, Napoleon marched on Moscow. So it was one of those alliances that was broken by Napoleon. But uh, Napoleon gave, at the time when they were in alliance, gave Russia sort of permission to take Finland away from Sweden. So the next player is Sweden. So Sweden uh, was not prepared to defend Finland. So Finland went to Russia real quick. Now Sweden also had a very weak king, King Gustav. He was very weak, he was old, he was a little on the senile side. The Swedish military uh, and, and the bureaucrats wanted a different king. In this time period, they recruited kings. It wasn't necessarily a hereditary king. So they went looking for a king or a crown prince that would replace the king. And they first went to my home country, and a cousin of mine from Denmark. Uh, his name was um, Christian August, and he was a, one of the best military minds in the Danish army. And because he was Scandinavian, the Swedish thought this would be a great person to end up being our ruler. 
we can teach the Russians a lesson and keep our national identity. So they sent for my cousin, he arrived. The king, who was still the king, really liked him. And he really liked what he was going to do. And also did the Swedish military. So he was set to be the next king. However, he had some bad habits. <laughs> he drank a lot, he did a lot of bad things, and he was overweight. Within three months of him being the crown prince, he was at a military uh, parade, had a stroke, and died on the spot. <laughs> so there goes Sweden's dreams <laughs> for the ruler. So then they went to a different source. They went to Napoleon uh, army and recruited John Baptiste um, uh, uh, Benedict. Sorry, I forgot his name. Benedict. And he was a, what they called a marshal. So he was a high general in Napoleon's army. He was French. He wasn't <laughs> Swedish. He didn't know a single word of Swedish language. But they, he again impressed the Swedish generals, the military, and he got the job. Not only did he get the job, they changed his name to uh, uh, Carl Johan. So he had more of a Scandinavian ring. Uh, Jean Baptiste. Uh, he was a military genius, but he knew when he stepped in that it was going to be very hard to fight off the Russians to get Finland back. So he turned his eyes west to Norway. And there he thought, that is what we need to do. We need to get Norway under our control, which was, of course, under Danish control at the time. So all these things are sort of mixing around at the time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, my cousin Frederick in, in Denmark was trying to hold on to Norway. He started to see what was going to happen. And uh, so he came up with this plan to send me to be the governor of Norway and that I would try to rally the Norwegians to uh, show their allegiance to Denmark and to fight the possible invasion of Sweden. Mm -hmm. So all these things uh, came to be, uh, and I was recruited. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself so you know how my resume did not really fit the, the job. <laughs> uh, I grew up, my mother was big. I was not a military person. I grew up uh, learning the sciences. Sciences was was my passion. And I was also taught, taught the arts. I was not a military person. However, I did have to join the Danish army and I did command some troops. But that was not my forte. Um, I was, when I came to Norway, I came in this last year, 1813, I was 26 years old. Uh, I've been told I'm very handsome. <laughs> I'm told that I'm a hard worker and that I'm very bright and that I, uh, I, you know, a person that listens to people. So in those respects, uh, the Norwegian people, when I came over, were very appreciative and they showed their loyalty to me. Uh, I was able to get the attention of the, uh, the the people, mainly the uh, leaders in Norway, some of them were farmers, some of them were merchants, and together we had hoped to figure out how to stop Sweden and to uh, eventually get our independence. Now this causes a problem because uh, Frederick sent me there, but he didn't understand completely that I was going to lobby for independence for Norway. He thought I was going to be a governor to help protect the area. So I went one step further than, than what he expected. And also, because of this blockade, uh, actually when I traveled to Norway to come, I had to travel in a ship dressed as a common sailor. I could not show my identity. 
So I came under the radar in order to, be, to come to, to you all at this time. We then uh, put together a plan and, and showed the uh, necessary people in Norway, and they sort of agreed with us. However, they were not military people. And even though I told them that they needed to train and get an army, uh, it was very hard for them to accept the fact that Sweden would actually invade. And at this point, they had not, but we needed to set up a defense in case that eventuality happened. In the meantime, uh, Karl Johan over in Sweden, uh, this was sort of the last days of Napoleon by this time. Uh, Karl Johan became the uh, major general in the what they called the Northern Alliance, which would have been the northern countries fighting against Napoleon. Sweden, I think Russia, Prussia uh, formed an army that was going to attack uh, Napoleon. And we did that, and they did that, at the Battle of Leipzig, which was a huge defeat for the Napoleon. And at that point in time, it looked like we were going to go all the way and get them to retreat to France and defeat them for one more time. However, Karl Johan has his eyes on the other. So he pulls a move that England had no idea about. Instead of pursuing Napoleon, he decides to take a little turn and head toward Denmark. And Denmark was not ready for him. So he defeated the Danish army quickly. And he forced the Treaty of Kiel, which, according to the treaty, gave possession of Norway to Sweden. Now, this treaty, no one from Norway was consulted, obviously. So they are not happy about all this. And King Frederick then is his hands tied. He's lost the war. There's not much he could do. So he had signed the treaty. In the meantime, I'm in Norway trying to urge people to, you know, learn how to get going with their independence. And they uh, did what, what we could, okay? So about that time, we started to uh, form the idea of an assembly to group the people who would, could make decisions in Norway in order to, to get a constitution going, even though we had the threat of Sweden. We decided to go ahead and push through it. Uh, we ended up trying to decide, well, where would we meet and how would this happen? So we decided to meet in an area that was not close to a big city because we were afraid that the population masses may not appreciate what we were doing and may distract us. We did not want to be close to the Swedish border because they could attack us and capture us all. And so we decided to meet at Eidsvall. I fall, uh, which was an estate of one of our delegates. He was a very rich man. This was a very nice estate. Uh, and it was seemingly a good place to meet. And this would have been uh, at the end of the winter time. So the call went out to, to recruit delegates to come from all the way from Norway. Unfortunately, the way communication was, and the fact, the main fact was that they had a spring fall, a thaw that caused the northern routes to be muddy. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to travel. So actually, when the assembly came together, we were missing many of our northern brothers. They couldn't make it. But we went ahead anyway. And at the estate, there was not enough lodging for people, so people had to settled down in people's farmhouses. Some of them had to walk miles a day to get to the meetings in order for us to meet together and hammer out this constitution. We ended up meeting many times. We had a lot of input. We had people who wanted a free Norway. And the other group was the people who wanted this union with Sweden. Supposedly this un union with Sweden, according to the Swedes, was that uh, they would have a certain amount of their own powers and that uh, Sweden would have 
would be, you know, have the king, and they would, uh, you know, be under that kingdom. However, they would keep some of their local laws. But they did not want Norway to have a constitution. So that was still as a major problem for Carl Johan. Now, Carl Johan, of course, is he's starting to mass on the Swedish border. He's trying to decide, what do I do here? I don't want to make the Norwegian people hate me forever. But then again, we have to teach them a lesson and learn that they are part of Sweden. So he was uh, trying to figure out what to do. In the meantime, we're trying to work up some defenses and work on this constitution at the same time. So all of this is bubbling up like a crock full of delicious soup or something, okay? <laughs> Uh, so, we just kept hammering away, we met many times, we had the, you know, the, uh, the farmers come in, we, we had a lot of people who wanted to be uh, just independent from all countries, and then we had uh, a lot of merchants and, and landowners who wanted to have the union with Sweden so that not, everything would be seamless as far as their businesses would go. They did not want the heartbreak of seeing another blockade or punishment, or whatever. So, but we just kept working at it, we kept working at it, and finally, uh, ideas came in on the Constitution and how we should do it. I would be king, and I sort of wanted that to happen because I wanted to make sure it was a smooth transition, not because I was powerful, just because I wanted to see that everything went through. Uh, I wanted to have some power. However, Norwegians, being them who they were, they wanted to be independent. So we eventually came up with the idea of a constitutional monarch, which meant I would have power in military and foreign relations, but that there would be a legislature, legislature set up to govern the country. And so that's, it, that's how it came down. Uh, right, everyone was sort of happy with it. I was a little disappointed, but then again, I knew I was still going to be king. <laughs> so we went ahead, and on May 16th, everybody signed off on it, and May 17th was made public. So that's why we celebrated on May 17th. Yay! <laughs> basically defeated our army very quickly. We did have some successes in a, some small battles, but uh, he immediately, but he did not overrun the country. He just showed the power that Sweden had and then retracted back, basically, and then waited for the response. I told the government at this point that I'm not going to respond to them. We're going to force his hand. If he wants to do more damage, he's going to come and have to do it with his army, and he's going to have to just do it. We're not going to give in. So that's basically what happened. Uh, Carl Johan might seem like an enemy, but some of you who have traveled or lived in Norway might know that the main street in Oslo is Carl Johan Way. Oh. And you also know in front of the uh, I think it's the legislature building. I'm not sure which, which building it is. It's a statue of him on a horse. So believe it or not, over time, the people started to love him for whatever reason. Now maybe it has something to do with how the Norwegians dealt with the Danes too. The Danes, or the Norwegians did not hate the Danes at all. They were tired of the, you know, constant, uh, taking of their materials and, and their national identity, but they didn't hate them. They were loyal subjects. 
So evidently, maybe they're going to be loyal subjects to Sweden again. <clears throat> but Sweden just, uh, you know, he kept, Carl Johan kept thinking, you know, these people, they need to change, they need to change. Well, finally, he decided to take a trip to, at the time, Oslo is called Christiana. And so he took a trip to meet with <coughs> He wanted to meet with me, but when he got here, he didn't get just me, he got the whole assembly. Mm -hmm. And he was not prepared for that. He saw our determination, and he tried to work out a deal with us, basically. And so over time, over a few months, uh, we got together with the Swedish government and sort of hammered out some that, that my time was in being a Dane and being not of knowing even the Norwegian language, my time was, was now done. I understood. I had to abdicate my throne in order to promote this union between Sweden and Norway. So soon I will be leaving back for Norway. And you people, you've been the greatest people. I'm glad to work for you and to give you the Constitution done. That's what I came here to do. And I just want to explore possibilities before I leave of what this might mean to Norway in the future. Well, I, I see something. I see something. Now, mainly in Norway, everything was done in Dan Danish. The government was run in Danish. The churches spoke only Danish, from what I understand. And uh, bureaucrats spoke Danish. Now, yes, out the farmland, people had a sense of what the Norwegian language was. There also was no written Norwegian language, no written language in Norway. So what I see with this constitution, I see that Norway is going to develop their language. They're going to get a written language. They're going to start to peel away the <coughs> Danish influence that has been there for years. I also see that the arts and education will all be toward the goal of uniting Norway with their culture and their language. I see that there are going to be people who write books. I see playwrights. I see musicians. All with the thought of glorifying Norway. I do see these things. I think they're going to happen. I also see a day when Sweden will be out of the picture and we will get our true independence. So I bid you adieu and back to Norway and become their king.